everyone, my name's Tracy, health coach and personal trainer and founder of HighEnergyGirl.com, where we help women over 50 age stronger and healthier instead of sicker and weaker. And today we're going to talk about goal setting for 2023. So in the last video, we covered looking back to plan forward. So evaluating where you were at the end of 2022, what went right, what went wrong, and that way you can have a better plan for 2023. So today we're gonna go and set the goals for 2023. I've already done mine, so I'll share them with you as well. And I'll give you some ideas on how you can also add to your goal list. So the first area of life we covered was home life. You looked back, so what do you want moving forward? How about a home that's tidy, organized, peaceful, clean, quiet, relaxing, bright, joyful, cheerful, welcoming, all those types of things. I'm actually taking a feng shui class next week, so I'll share everything I learned about the year of the rabbit. So for my goals, what I said is that I want to organize all my cupboards and drawers and closets, and I'm going to do one thing a day, okay? One drawer or cupboard each day so I don't get overwhelmed, which I tend to do. And also make a home repair list. So we need to replaster our pool. We need to paint the outside of our home. And I'm sure there's plenty of other things that I'm going to be adding to that list, but that is kind of the goal. My home is already pretty tidy and decluttered, but I'm going to do more so I could make space because everything is about energy flow. And so with feng shui principles, you want to have space for more good things to flow. Imagining like if you have a closet that needs to be clean, if it's jammed full of clothes, that you're not going to be attracting any more clothes. So you want to create space so that you can welcome new things into your wardrobe, which is kind of fun. So the next area we looked at was relationships. So how are you going to improve your relationships with the various people in your life? So maybe it's your spouse or partner, your children, your parents, friends, coworkers, or just people in your community at large. So some ideas that I had were, I'm going to start having lunches again with friends. It's something I used to do when the kids were in school. And, you know, we'd meet for lunch while the kids were occupied. Well, when they stopped school, we kind of stopped doing that regularly. So I'm going to bring that back. Another thing is sending my friends birthday cards, my family birthday cards. But, you know, snail mail, old-fashioned, funny, happy birthday cards. You know, nowadays, everybody just sends a text message or a Facebook message. Like, I want to go back to the old-fashioned stuff. And then my husband's what is it called? Love language is physical touch. So I'm going to just spend more time hugging him, kissing him just for no reason. Just, you know, helping him feel the love from me and also keeping in touch with friends that you haven't talked to for a long time. Just give him a call and say, hey, what's going on? No texting, no emailing, but an old fashioned phone call and perhaps set a time to meet for coffee, a hike or a lunch. And the next area we cover is finances, something that actually can be a stressful thing for many people. So we want to really focus on having an abundant mindset with finances. One of my favorite books is You Are a Badass with Money by Jen Sincero. Super funny, super good, and also The Law of Attraction with Money from Abraham Hicks. Really, really good. So you already looked back so you know where you are now. So what do you want to plan for this year? So some of my goals were I my husband loves QuickBooks. I do not. So I'm going to update our QuickBooks once a week. That way he just feels at peace with his own sense of, you know, just knowing where we are. And I'm also going to build back my high energy goal coaching practice since the nonprofit that I was volunteering at, my job is kind of complete. They don't need me so much. So I have more time to go back to my heart's passion of coaching women to be healthier and stronger, of course. Of course, the next category is fitness. So you already looked back to where you are. Well, where do you want to be? So take a look at the different areas of fitness. So we have strength and cardiovascular health, flexibility, 
mobility, and balance? How do you want to improve those different areas of your life? So maybe you're going to start doing, say, strength training twice a week or yoga two or three times a week. Or maybe you're going to, instead of doing walking, maybe you're going to climb a a little hill or something. So find your goals of what you're going to do to improve your areas of your life. So for me, um, I'm doing a pull-up challenge right now because I want to be able to do a strict pull-up and... I can do chin-ups and I can do a kipping pull-up, which is kind of like a swing, but I want to be able to do a dead hang strict pull-up. Another thing is more yoga. So I have a great website I belong to called Gaia, which has great yoga classes on it and really fun documentaries. So I'm going to do more yoga and mobility movement. So mobility is the range of motion that a particular limb or body part has in a joint. So it could be your shoulders, doing shoulder rolls neck rolls, things like that, so you can increase your range of motion. And the yoga helps with flexibility and balance as well. So yoga is really, really good for you. You can join a yoga studio. You can, I have on my YouTube, I have lots of yoga videos from myself and then one of my friends who helped us during COVID. So just have a baby step, one new habit that you're going to bring into your life in a few of these different areas. Don't get overwhelmed by it, okay? Walking outside, that's another great thing. I go to the park if it's not raining um, or if it's not raining too hard and go walk a couple miles out in nature and just go talk to God. I don't plug in, don't listen to anything, just go and talk to the birds and the cows and talk to God and connect with nature. Next up is sleep. So what are your sleep goals? Maybe you've only slept six hours a night and you want to sleep seven or eight. So what do you, how do you want to improve your sleep routine? Maybe you stay up too late and then you can't wake up in the morning. So what is an improved sleep routine look like for you? The best times of sleep are between 11 and three. And it's easiest to sleep in a cool, dark room. So I have this amazing device in my mattress pad that keeps my bed cool, and I have an overhead fan that keeps me cool. And no screens before bedtime because the blue light of the screens or any LED light bulb make your brain thinks it's daytime, okay? So you don't want blue light. You want the old incandescent light bulbs and put your screens away. So for me, I have really good sleep. I'm going to say I that's one of my favorite luxuries of life is a good sleep. So, but my bad habit is going on Telegram and looking to see what the latest scoop is and doing that right before bed. So I need to work on that habit. Okay, next we have passionate purpose. So living in passion is so, so important because you want to wake up every day like you're excited to get out of bed and see what the day brings for you. When I was writing my book, I was up at like 4, 4.30 every morning without an alarm just because I was so excited to go to the computer and write. So what is your passion? And one way to find that out is what do you love doing so much that you would do it for free every day? That's like why I was volunteering or I have been volunteering for this organization for a year and a half because I love it. It gives me joy. It makes me feel like I'm living on purpose because I'm helping people. And just wait till we get our sleeves rolled up and really dig deep and get started. So what does your passionate purpose look like for you? So I just said high energy girl. Helping women, coaching, and helping people see results is one of my passions. Continuing the work at Love One Society, even though it's very, it's not a lot for me to do, just maintaining that level of work to help these people all over the world is a passionate purpose of mine. So what do you love doing? What brings you joy and just warms your heart? That is your passion and purpose. Maybe it's volunteering at a local charity like the animal shelter or at, I don't know, a nursery like a daycare center or something. Um, Seniors need help and love and veterans need help and love. So maybe something like that could help you find your passion and purpose. Next up, we have general health. Do you have a health goal? Are you at a healthy weight? How about medications? Do you want to minimize those somehow? And how's your energy level? Do you have good energy? Is that an area that you want to improve? So also pain. Like do you do you have 
Are you able to move pain-free? Because we know that motion is lotion for the joints. So the more you move, the better you'll feel. And I'm not even kidding. I just had a, a big realization of that myself. I was having lower back pain and my son wanted to go on a hike. I didn't want to go because of my back. I went anyway, and believe it or not, the rest of the day, my back did not hurt at all. It was a miracle. Movement helps everything. Some of mine are, is I want to take my supplements every day. So now every morning, I put them in three little cups, morning, midday, and evening. That way, they're all measured out. They're all ready to go. I just need to grab some that tastes good and slug them down. And the other is I want to spend more quiet time with myself just either journaling or meditating or connecting with nature, but I just need to spend more quiet time doing nothing, just going within. And two more. We have food. What does your nutrition look like? So you already did that last week, right? So now what do you want it to be? What are you going to set as a goal to eat? So some of the things I love to say is whole food, local, seasonal, natural, like all of those. Get rid of the boxes and wrappers and eat more leaves and peels and healthy protein, okay? So also, are you eating around the clock or are you listening to your body? So it's really important to be in tune with your natural hunger hormones. Leptin and ghrelin, those are there to tell you when you're hungry and when you've had enough food, okay? So just tuning in so that you make the best choices for you. And also when you eat, you want to eat for energy and not eat for cravings. So ditching sugar to me is number one. I can't tell you how much better I felt when I got off that blood sugar roller coaster because I just don't eat sugar at all anymore. So it helped my heart. It helps so many things. So my food goals are less wine and more intermittent fasting. Okay, so what does that look like? That means that I don't eat my first meal until around 11 or 12 in the day and I eat my last meal around six or seven. Okay, my minimum window is 16 hours of fasting. That's my minimum goal. Do I hit it every day? No, and that's okay, but I hit it most days, okay? So what are your goals with your nutrition and your food? And the last topic is career. So are you on the hamster wheel? Or do you want a different career? So you have to decide what your goals are for your own career path. And something that is a good indicator is, do you love your work? Do you look forward to going every day? Do you look forward to doing the work you do? And if not, then it's time to find something that you do love. So the question that kind of goes back to the passion and purpose is, what are you naturally good at? And what do you love doing so much that you would do it for free every day? That is how you find the career that's going to like just fill your love cup and bring you joy. So set down some goals for you for your career path. So mine was, okay, one of my careers is a housewife. <laughs> like it or not, that's what I love. And so I'm going to be cooking more meals, like new meals, new recipes. I cooked a feast the other night, all new recipes. It was super fun and delicious. And another one is, is I'm starting a private membership association so that High Energy Girl can actually ha have more members and I can help more clients. And it will be lots of fun helping women empower themselves and empower each other so that we can all age stronger and healthier and also work on our spiritual journeys as a collective. We're going to be talking about that on the next video. So anyways, you guys, please set a goal for each one of these topics, just one, that's all you need, and baby step your way and create one new habit at a time. Comment below and let me know what is your first habit that you're working on. Mine is my home life. I am doing my organization right now. So I'm starting in my bathroom and cleaning out one drawer a day. So getting that done and then I'm putting it in my daily journal that it is done. So just pick one, pick a one habit for each of these areas that you want to, or one goal rather, and then create a healthy habit around each, and then just pick one that you're going to start on until it becomes second nature, and then you can move on to the next category because you don't want to drink from a fire hose and try to do all nine categories at once, or it might be overwhelming and you get nothing done, all right? So baby steps are your way to success. Anyways, comment below, let me know what are you going to do to kick off 2023 goals 
and what habits are you going to create around those goals so that you can baby step your way to success. Thank you so much for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. See you on the next video.